Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the delicious um, lunch and had good networking opportunities. Again, my name is Oliver Volk. I'm um, honored to represent Allianz as one of the leading insurance incumbents amongst uh, all those um, very agile startups and fintechs and insurtechs here. Um, what I'm going to talk about, um, Reggie just introduced it. I will give you just an update about blockchain basics. Some of you may think, well, that's too basic, but I just want to give uh, those who have more like a business background and uh, basic understanding of what we are talking about. Then um, I'm happy to introduce uh, the, the latest Allianz um, blockchain use case, which was just um, press released last week. Some of the colleagues um, who um, were working in that project are on site here too. And then there's that uh, initiative, Allianz is founding member of B3i, um, which also just released a use case in the middle of the year where I'm going to talk about. So, um, blockchain, well, basically it's a, a, a shared data system which is not centralized, uh, but it's decentralized. Um, that's nothing which is new to the world that, that had been um, there before. That's not the, uh, the new invention. Um, what is new is kind of the, the wedding of those two technologies, distributed um, IT architecture with an asymmetric cryptography. Um, that's something where you, in the end, um, generate a blockchain, which means there's a um, distributed ledger system, which is not usually not runner-owned by, um, by someone or by a party, but it stands for itself. So the technique um, gives the, the trust in that system, and each and every participant can use that to do um, what the special uh, blockchain technology is offering here. Um, why do we call it Internet of Values if you compare to, to the Internet? Um, internet gives you the, the um, ability to um, access to information from wherever you are in the world, um, independently how many people are accessing this information. You might um, count your clicks, but that's uh, nothing which will change the, um, the information itself. For blockchain, it's more that you can document transaction, means like if I send a value, a money, a land title, or whatever to someone, then it has to be clear for the whole community and somewhere documented that the other person got the money or the title and I do not have it anymore. Otherwise, the system wouldn't work, so I can send um, randomly um, titles and values to someone. That solves the, the so-called double spending um, problem. Very basic again, um, just a question, who in the room is owning um, Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies? Okay, not that much as expected. Um, Bitcoin is an application uh, compared to, to an app on your smartphone. Blockchain is the technology compared to your operating system. Might be Android, might be iOS, and that said, you see, there's not only one blockchain um, technology. There are different ones. Blockchain was only invented in 2008 by a synonym called Satoshi Nakamoto. Um, you can Google that. There's a white paper of eight or nine pages, very mathematically, but uh, it's worth to have a look on it. Um, it was further developed in 2014 when Ethereum, which is an own cryptocurrency too, was invented where it's possible to run smart contracts. And one of the latest invention blockchain technology is called Hyperledger Fabric based on, on Linux. Um, I only can encourage you, um, buy some blockchain, uh, buy some Bitcoins, not as an investment, but spend 50 euro, um, get your wallet, because that do you need uh, on, your, on your smartphone to, uh, to store that. And look how it feels to get some, some impression and uh, to be able also to talk about that. Where do we see the areas uh, and the, the benefits of the blockchain technology? Um, we in the insurance industry, for us, is not the main focus the transfer of the money. Of course, we have a lot to do with transfer of money, but the insurance industry obviously consists out of contracts, contracts between different parties and contracts would have certain if and then clauses. So the smart contract, which means the automation of contracts 
run on the blockchain is very, very important for us because rather than looking if something has happened, you can, you can program it ex ante, especially for parametric claims so that no one, if something happens or will be triggered, has to do anything, but that's all then done and dusted. The single version of truth, which you might have heard about too, is for us also very important. That means there's one system each and every one is looking at and each and every one has access and read and write um, um, access. That means if something is changed, it has to be agreed from a kind of community, there has to be a kind of consensus algorithm, and it will be stored. That means each and everything which transacts and which will add to that transaction will be stored. It's immutable. That means you can't delete something or edit something. If something is wrong, you have to do a new transaction and to put something on top. Digital identity would be also very, very um, interesting and helpful for us if we can invent that, but we are not um, actively uh, researching on that. So those are, for us, the main um, triggers which we can use for blockchain technology benefits in the insurance industry. It's different to, to say where do you want to start. Um, we have, uh, as mentioned at the beginning, um, some insurtechs um, researching in that area. What we as, as Allianz do, we have intra-group use cases which we develop. Allianz is kind of a big uh, initiative itself. There are many, many um, primary insurers within Allianz all over the world, so we have connections within our own Allianz group network. There's one um, use case I will touch on the, on the next slides. The B3R use case I also will um, talk about. B3I is an initiative which was founded last year. Um, Allianz was founding member. It stands for B, Black Blockchain, and the 3I are the insurance industry initiative. I will touch on that later. So we have like use cases which you make use of yourself as a company and um, either to, to optimize um, existing processes or to try to gain a uh, competitive advantage. The insurance industry initiative will give advantage to each and every one participating. That's kind of a um, standard we try to, to roll out, maybe compared to the SWIFT standard for the banking industry where each and every one participating on that is using, but that's not a competitive advantage. The third step then could be if there will be blockchains across industry, for example, if there will be a solution for um, money transfer from the financial service industry, we can make use of that too, if we talk about telematics where different um, use cases are combined, but that's uh, very much future for, for me. Captive program, I don't know if, if some of you have heard of that, but it's a very um, complex area of commercial insurance. Think of um, a multinational client having um, affiliates all over the world, and that one is approaching an insurer like Allianz saying, well, um, we have all those different um, affiliates, we pay um, a premium and we do need insurance cover, can we somehow make this transparent and can we somehow do this program as a self-insured program, means the client pays locally and then the money is transferred via different insurance and reinsurance processes back to the client. Like if you put the money for your health, in health insurance on your bank account and every time something happens, um, you take the money from your account, that then be, can still be recovered. But that's something which is very complex. You have many, uh, many administrative workloads, reconciliation processes, and it's very time consuming and there's no transparency for the time being, but that process is run. Um, but could be op uh, optimized via blockchain technology. Um, what the Allianz colleagues did, they invented um, processes where you can locally submit the claims very easily, um, as well as the captive manager can um, do the payouts very quickly. And you have a clear system um, where you can step by step see where certain things happen and each and every one has the same view on that system. The main benefits from what we talked uh, about before is the transparency as um, whomever participant you are in that system, you can access it quite, uh, quite easily. You can see whether claims uh, have stuck somewhere or payments are out. You can easily consolidate certain things. The speed is very impressive due to the fact that 
if the, the affiliate from the client pays locally, the money has to go um, different parties. It may take months until the money comes back to the, to the captive. That has been speed up uh, into minutes as now the money could be directly sent from the local affiliate to the captive and the administrative process will be covered in parallel. Um, security in terms of we do not have to double check. In theory, there shouldn't be any reconciliation processes as everyone is there and obvious for each and everyone. And if you want to change something, then it's visible for something else. B3I, as mentioned, uh, the initiative which was founded last year in October. Um, at the end of last year, we grew up to 15 members. You can see that most or almost all of the big reinsurance and insurance companies are within that uh, initiative. We then um, decided to have a freeze for new entrants because with that we now want to develop our use case. I will um, cover that right, uh, right now. Um, in uh, September this year, we presented our first results from the use case at the Monte Carlo Rendezvous. That's a big um, reinsurance meeting which takes place every year at Monte Carlo. Um, very positive reaction and right after that we got another 23 new entrants to test the system including brokers, uh, because at the very beginning it only was concentrated on insurers and reinsurers because we wanted to have very um, clear the focus on, on that area, but of course it's open for brokers too and therefore we now added brokers to the, to the testing. And in parallel to, to um, DIA Munich, there's a um, two-day summit yesterday and today here in Munich where all the 38 came together. Uh, they exchanged their um, uh, information and their experiences with the new system and they will give an outlook on what's going to happen soon. The new unique position of B3I, um, we have, a, as, as you could see, a wide industry collaboration, so the main players are participating there. Um, we have a strong and fast-moving team. All those, or many of the passionate blockchain people from the, from the various companies, they are working on that team and um, we have a professional partner who is uh, supporting us, uh, which is IBM. Um, we are using one of the uh, latest blockchain technologies, decoupling the data from the um, transaction documentation, which is Hyperledger Fabric. And we also have a further high involvement of subject matter experts, means if we face some technical or business technical issues, then we still can go into the different um, members and ask if their specialists who are not dealing with blockchain have an opinion on that and help us to further develop the product. What are we doing especially is like if you picture the uh, insurance value chain from the policyholder onto the insurer to the reinsurer and the retrocessionaire, um, that's something where at the very beginning what said, well, all this will disrupt because at the end there will be the policy hold and there will be the capital market and each and everything in between will be automated, whether with blockchain or other technologies. That might be, but um, for me obviously not in the, in the near future. So what we did is like we identified one process between a reinsurer and a retrocessionaire. Retrocessionaire is just another reinsurer because you want to um, uh, to split the risk and give the reinsurance uh, to some other reinsurers um, to optimize the contractual management. So there already is reinsurance to reinsure a business and that is just very manual and we just want to optimize it. The good thing is, is um, or like the potential is we in the, re in the insurance uh, industry we have um, many inefficiencies still. It's very uh, paper-driven work, uh, very administrative, and we do need uh, very much uh, in terms of reconciliation. And there, a system like blockchain could help very much to avoid delays and to get rid of those reconciliations, which will then um, result into uh, a better credit risk and um, uh, redundancies and uh, cash flow inefficiencies. Um, the proof of concept um, was a minimal viable product, which means we identified one single process and one single contract. This is a, um, a contract, which is a, a property catastrophe, excess of loss. 
independently if you know about that or not, but um, believe me, there are lots of other contracts, other line of businesses, but we focused on one to try to um, put this on the blockchain and then further um, exchange it. So what we did is we pictured the flying car, but we said, well, look here, um, we are trying um, to give you the skateboard as the first result, which is from our point of success, if you ask the business, then there's sometimes not the very big wow effect because you have to start slow. But if you're now going to further develop um, to the bicycle, to the car, and to the flying car, uh, then it would be wow. And the technology is still not um, that uh, developed. So you still have to work on the underlying technology to sooner or later come to the flying car. That's a picture which shows you, I think, quite good what I mean with uh, one single version of truth. For the time being, we have the insurer, the reinsurer, and the retrocessionaire. All of those have their single books. Uh, you can transfer it to other industries too, or to the, captive, uh, to the captive use case where you have the multinational client, where you have the insurer and the in reinsurer. Each and every one deals with premium, with claims. They put it in their books, and um, at the end of the quarter of the month, they are going to re report it um, to the other party. Then there will be reconciliation processes. Then there will be questions, why is that figure different to the figure we have? So it goes back and forth, and it's um, obviously very cumbersome before the money then can finally flow and everything is consolidated. The idea of blockchain technology with one single version of truth is that each and every participant um, has access to the same book, which is either from the picture here in the middle or lies and each and every participant as everyone having, having the same information. If, if information is updated, then there will be an update too. That means there will be an automation in validation. Uh, there shouldn't be any more any reconciliation. And there will be an automated reporting, which, which, which leads to an um, immediate um, flow of money. So on the left-hand side, that's the traditional ledger as we see it right now, at least for us in the insurance industry. Other industries might be more automated. And the shared ledger based on blockchain technology, that's what we mean if we talk about the single version of truth. We also have findings of our concept. Um, we talk to the, to the different participants, uh, how they estimate the, the impact in the business. And it was uh, quite interesting to see that uh, on average, they see an uh, efficiency gains up to 30% and a reduction of the uh, combined ratio up to 0.5%. Better client experience, uh, obviously, and a higher service level and efficiency. The risk and uh, potential constraints um, is the uh, scalability, which is not that relevant for us in the insurance industry compared to the financial service industry, as um, usually scalability problems occur when you have lots of transactions, for example, credit card companies or um, banks. This is not yet the case with us for our business, so that's something where we can uh, cope with. Um, the question is, uh, what do we do if we really want to handle comp very complex contracts? The technology itself has still to further um, develop, so there might be changes. And um, uh, the question is whether we can adopt certain standards for the industry. Um, one of the main point also is if you want to um, get your hands dirty with um, blockchain technology, really have a look where it is efficient, useful, and where it makes sense and be aware that you always need a certain kind of standards before you blockchain anything. So if you do not have a certain standard or a common data language, blockchain can't help. And even if you do not use blockchain in the end for any other means of uh, digitalization, um, I'm quite sure you would need those kind of standards. Um, how can insurance companies get involved into that or brokers? Um, like mentioned, we have that summit running right now. There's a user acceptance uh, testing right now. Um, B3i is still based on the memorandum of understanding, means there's a legal framework, but uh, the governance uh, is not uh, very on a very high level. Um, therefore, the, the aim is beginning of next year to set up an own legal body for B3i with people we staff for B3i um, legal body and with an own funding for B3i and that's something which is um, 
we are obviously right now discussed and there had been uh, or there will be discussions and um, information um, up to the end of the year. So each and everyone who is interested in that, let me know why um, well, I'm still using email, but I'm on, on LinkedIn and Twitter too, the same as B3i. We also have a B3i website, which is b3i.tech. Um, for any other questions, um, always happy to have discussions on the um, blockchain, not too technical level because um, honestly, I'm not a technical person, I'm a business person, but um, uh, be, be sure I'm always happy to have uh, chats about uh, blockchain technology. And if you have some use cases, I'm also always interested in because the very biggest challenge for me in that blockchain ecosystem is to really create use cases. There was a, um, a survey from a, a um, consulting company that there had been 26,000 use cases for blockchain the last year until um, mid of this year already 25,000. That's a great number, but if in the end there won't be any prototypes which come to production, um, it doesn't help that much. And uh, there's a big hype and uh, there are big expectations and the challenge is now to, to get use cases out of it. So I'm happy that Allianz, as uh, I said, an insurance incumbent, is also working on that, um, was able to produce use cases and um, will go the next steps in terms of putting this to the next level and um, hopefully sooner or later we will uh, see the flying car and be sure I will let you know about that. Thank you very much.